Welcome to video two for week 10. In the previous video, I defined an eigenvalue and an eigenvector, eigenvectors being directions that were preserved by a matrix and eigenvalue being the scaling factor by which those vectors were changed. So their direction can be remain the same, but they could be scaled or they could be flipped or they could even be sent to zero. Now I wanna talk about how to actually calculate these things. So I'm gonna go through a bit of a setup to give us the algorithm for calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So here's the definition. I have a vector V, a non-zero vector V, which is multiplied by lambda when the matrix A acts on it. So being multiplied by lambda, that's the same as being acted on by the matrix lambda identity. So that's the matrix that has lambdas down the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So if you're acted on by the matrix lambda times identity, that's exactly the same as just multiplying everything by lambda. It's the same as scalar multiplication by lambda. So this is gonna be equal to this via this connection. And I could take those over to one side of the equation. I say that the action of A on the vector V minus the action of lambda identity on the vector V, that needs to give me the zero vector V. Well, that means that if I think of this as the action of v minus or a minus lambda identity, that's setting the vector v to zero. So the vector v needs to be in the kernel of a minus lambda identity. So that's the matrix I get, where I take the matrix A and I subtract lambda from each of the diagonal entries, so a minus lambda identity. So if I have an eigenvector of a matrix, it has to be in the kernel of a minus lambda identity for some eigenvalue. Since V is non-zero, that means this kernel needs to be non-trivial. And from our properties of invertible matrices, a kernel being non-trivial means the matrix is not invertible, means it has determinant equal to zero. So in for order for this to work, the determinant of this matrix needs to be zero. And this is how we are gonna determine the possible eigenvalues. The numbers that we can put here such that we get a determinant of zero are going to be the eigenvalues, the things that actually lead to vectors that are in these kernels. So that basically gives us an algorithm. We write this matrix A minus lambda identity. So that's taking the matrix A and subtracting lambda. Lambda is a variable here, it's an unknown from each of the diagonal entries. We calculate the determinant of that, still leaving lambda as an unknown. And that gives us a polynomial in lambda. We set that polynomial equal to zero. This polynomial is called the characteristic polynomial of the matrix. And this polynomial is gonna have a degree equal to the size of the matrix. Just because of how determinants are calculated, because determinants are calculated recursively, each time I do the recursive determinant, I multiply by lambda perhaps one more time. So a three by three matrix, I'm gonna get a cubic. A four by four matrix, I'm gonna get a quartic. The degree of this characteristic polynomial is the size N of the matrix. So I'm gonna get a polynomial, and each of the roots of this polynomial, so in, in order for this to actually give us eigenvalues and eigenvectors, I need lambda to make this determinant equal to zero. So the lambdas that satisfy that are gonna be the roots of the characteristic polynomial, and that's gonna give me a finite number of possible eigenvalues. All polynomials have finite numbers of roots. They may not have any roots. Um, they may have some roots. We'll see how that works. But each of those roots are gonna be the eigenvalue. So that tells us how to calculate eigenvalues, write this determinant, it's a polynomial, solve the polynomial. And then for each of these, once we actually have them, when these are numbers, no longer unknowns, I'll calculate the specific kernel because that kernel is gonna be where I find the eigenvectors. And I'm guaranteed to find non-zero vectors in this kernel because of this condition. These, lam these lambda i's are things that have non-trivial kernels, the associated A minus lambda identity matrix, will have something in its kernel. So I'm guaranteed to find vectors in these kernels. If I don't, I've done something wrong with the polynomial step. That's my algorithm. I wanna talk a little bit about multiplicities. The next video is gonna have examples of actually doing the algorithm, but to talk about what to expect, I want to I want to detour a bit into multiplicity. So if I have a polynomial and a root of that polynomial, alpha is a root of a polynomial. That's equivalent to saying that x minus alpha is a factor of that polynomial. That I could factor x minus alpha out of that polynomial, and I may be able to factor it out multiple times, but I can only do this at most finitely many times because of the degree of the polynomial. So there exists some largest number such that my polynomial pulls out all of these factors and cue the thing I have left over 
does not have a factor of x minus alpha. Equivalently, alpha is not a root of q. For most of the polynomials we've seen, we've seen roots of multiplicity one, but we could certainly have roots of higher multiplicity. That's what this number n is called. It is called the multiplicity of the root. And this is important because the eigenvalues are determined by the characteristic polynomial. And I said that the kernel associated to each of these eigenvalues is where I'm going to find the eigenvectors. So for some given eigenvalue, the set of all eigenvectors, and then adding the zero vector, because the zero vector is never an eigenvector, is called the eigenspace. And this is going to be a linear subspace. It's going to be a span. And I can ask what the dimension of this eigenspace is. How many eigenvectors are there for a given eigenvalue? And it turns out that the dimension of this is bounded by the multiplicity of lambda as the root of the characteristic polynomial. So if the characteristic polynomial has two copies of x minus lambda, I might get a two-dimensional eigenspace. If it has x minus lambda cubed as a factor, I might get a three-dimensional eigenspace. But if x minus lambda is only a simple factor, it only shows up once, then I'm only guaranteed to get a line. I will always get at least a line. There must be an eigenvector in the eigenspace. I may get more. This is a bound. I'm not guaranteed to actually achieve this. But this tells me how many possible eigenvalues I, or eigenvectors I could get for some eigenvalue. And then again, this is all fairly abstract at this point. But we'll do, we'll do some examples in the next video of how to actually calculate them. One last thing I want to mention in this video is there's a nice theorem about symmetric matrices. So I defined the transpose earlier in the course. Transpose is flipping something over the diagonal. A matrix is called symmetric if it is equal to its transpose. And here are two examples. You see that if I look at this um, matrix over the diagonal, 1 and 1 are the same, negative 3 and 3 are the same, 0 and 0 are the same. This matrix is completely symmetric over the diagonal. Likewise here, if I flip over the diagonal here, 4 and 4 are the same, negative 2 and negative 2 are the same, negative 9 negative 9 are the same, 3 and 3 are the same, 3 and 3 are the same, negative 1 negative 1 are the same. This matrix is precisely flipped symmetrically over its diagonal to give exactly the same thing. So matrices that have this property that A is the same as its transpose are called symmetric matrices. And these are really nice examples for eigenvectors because there's a theorem that says that a symmetric matrix will always have the maximum number of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So our polynomial is going to have all real roots. We're going to get, so this will be a 4 by 4 polynomial. It'll give us four eigenvalues, perhaps with multiplicity. And then all of those eigenvalues will have the maximal eigenspaces associated with them. So if we, if we have a root of multiplicity 2, we're going to get a two-dimensional eigenspace. This means that we often use symmetric matrices as examples for eigenvalue and eigenvector calculations. And in the next video, we will do some example calculations.